Welcome to art class. Today we're starting our landscape project and so we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on our backgrounds. Let me share my screen. All right. So for this project, you get to um, recreate um, or be inspired by any landscape of your choosing. So we're gonna start by going to insert image, search the web, which you can access via the insert button or this little picture icon, both of them work exactly the same. Insert image, search the web or insert, this is just insert image, search the web. This one's slightly faster. Um, and so, you know, if you just look up landscape, it's going to give you a wide variety. So definitely like, start there and see if there's anything that like really captures your attention. Like this is gorgeous. Um, and what you're really looking for in a landscape is just uh, like some very clearly defined spaces. Um, for example, in, in this one, you know, I clearly have clouds, mountains, land that's really well divided. Um, and generally speaking, I mean, most of them are going to be like that. This is insanely hard. This one's lovely. Clouds, mountains, waters, trees. Very nice. Um, and so really, you just want to pick out one that like calls to you. Um, like I would avoid this one. Like the sky is not super interesting. Clouds are not well-defined. Um, landscape, like, yes, there's land, but it's like hard to pick out the individual details. Um, and generally also you want to look for one that is in this kind of layout of being longer than it is wide. Ooh, that's fun with the road. Um, I would ask that you avoid images like this where um, this is clearly someone else's artwork that they've created. And also just because like we're doing a landscape and whereas the focus is not on the landscape in this artwork. It's nice with the clouds. All right, I guess I should go ahead and pick something. I actually liked a couple of these up here. I'm loving those trees. Actually, I think I am gonna end up with this one just because it's like super interesting. Um, or maybe one with mountains since mountains are probably gonna be pretty common for what we're doing. This is a really nice one too. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move my photograph over so that it's it's on the left hand side because then I can work on the right hand side. And what I want to bring your attention to is that our landscape is divided into um, the background, the middle ground and the foreground. So we have the background, middle ground and the foreground. And so anytime you're doing a, a landscape and this is really any medium uh, you always want to start with the background. So that is what we are doing today is we are going to 100% focus on just the background, meaning that I'm not going to do any mountains today. I'm not going to do any water and I'm not going to do any trees whatsoever. I'm going to focus exclusively on the sky and clouds. And the reason we do this is because um, when you work from back to front, whatever you do in the back, like if you start with the background, it's going to look the farthest away. So since I want my landscape to have that illusion of depth of like looking like a photograph that you can walk into. I want to start with my background to make it look the farthest away. Um, it also makes sense because um, as we know in Google Draw, whatever you do first will be in the back and then whatever you do on top will be on top of that. So it just makes sense to build it that way as well. All right, so to actually start creating our landscape, we need to switch over to our Pac-Man polyline tool. And I call it a Pac-Man polyline because it kind of looks like a little square Pac-Man. So I clicked on that little teeny tiny arrow to go from line to select polyline. And remember the polyline tool lets me create shapes that are very blocky, really like that. So right now trying to trace these clouds would be like insanely difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. Let's start at 100%. That's actually really good. I'm go out to 50. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just create a basic square to represent like this little pop of blue that I can see behind the cloud. So using my polyline tool, see my little crosshairs? I'm going to uh, start at the horizon line 
And I like to just go ahead and trace around my photograph like this so I can really see my blue line easily. I'm gonna move this over. I prefer to move things over with my arrow key because that will keep everything lined up. I'm horrible at moving things with my mouse. I'm just gonna go ahead and line that up right beside it. And now, um, and you're gonna do this for every single shape. It defaults to this black borderline. We wanna get rid of it. So every time you make a shape, you're gonna be doing this. You're gonna set that border color to transparent which essentially gets rid of it. See how it has no black line now? And then I'm gonna do my best to match this color. Um, sometimes there will be a color that's actually really close on your default palette, but you are definitely gonna find yourself clicking on custom color so that you can really hone in on the color that matches whatever you're trying to match. And just to be clear right now, right now I'm looking at my background to really find that blue. And I feel like my blue is still too bright. I wanna dull it up a bit. So I find myself, I definitely play with color. So doling it up towards the gray there. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that is like so much closer. Obviously like it's gonna be impossible to get it exactly precise, but I'm gonna do my best to color match. All right, so that represents all of that blue in the very background. So let me clear off my annotations. And now I'm ready to actually start doing some of these clouds. I will go ahead and set my magnifying glass to 100% so that I can start tracing some of these clouds. Let me just see how I like it at 200%. You know what? I'm probably gonna leave it at 200% as well. Maybe 100, let's, let's see. If I could do it at 100, I'll leave it at 100. If I find myself struggling, I can always go to 200. All righty, so um, I'm gonna start just kind of tracing these cloud shapes. And I'm trying to figure out which one is in back. So for example, you see this dark cloud right here? It's on top of this lighter cloud. So I'm actually gonna start with this lighter cloud. I always wanna grab whatever is in the far back. And one thing I've learned from using the polyline tool so often is I really prefer to go around the shapes versus trying to line it up exactly on the edge of the shape. You will find that just going around it is easier. So, um, uh-oh, it turned into a black line. I'm gonna move over to select and just delete that. But that tells me I'm not zoomed in enough. 200%, now let's do it. I'm not trying to get every single little corner and crevice, but this strategy of going around your clouds, sorry, this cloud is pretty much the same shape. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and move up. I know there's a shadow there, just choosing to skip it for now. All right. This cloud shape pretty much fills this entire area until about here. So see, like when I got to the edge of the picture, I just went around the outside there. And now I can come back in. This is all very fuzzy. So I'm definitely having a moment of like, I am making some split decisions about where I wanna put things. Fortunately, I can always add more layers. So especially when I'm working on these like first initial shapes, I am not too stressed about it. Um, I'm also tell you, I've made a major mistake, which is that this is a massive shape. If I make even like one wrong click right now, it is gonna be all messed up and I'm gonna be so sad. So um, I really should have broken this down and did like smaller cloud shapes at one time. In fact, I'm just gonna like go ahead and, and close this off as soon as possible so that I don't like mess it up. Yeah, like that's a massive complex shape. Um, not, not a good idea. So I did set my border color. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead. This is such a massive shape. I'm going to move it over. This light blue is actually really accurate. Um, so I think I'm going to actually keep this color, but I'm going to go to custom and just make it like a little bit transparent. Yeah. Now, if I use my arrow keys to move it over, 
that's uh it let's see how it's like lined up perfectly on the top there so if i had to drag this over i might move it up too far or down too low but this should actually line up on the edge beautiful so like i said this that was a massive complex shape let's try this again without doing like eight billion um little cloud shapes like or one giant cloud shape so let's talk about making smaller cloud shapes okay so let's say I'm working on this larger cloud here, but I'm I, I'm not super confident in my abilities with the polyline tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it in pieces. So this cloud shape is bigger than what I did it. I'm gonna just choose a generic kind of dark shape for now, because just to, I'll, I'll change this color later. And then I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna overlap the shape I just did because I'm still working on this darker cloud but I'm gonna do it in multiple pieces. Close it off. Okay, and then I need to do one more piece here. Again, I'm gonna make sure I overlap. So my I started inside the first shape. And the great thing about clouds is like, no one will ever know if it was like not perfect because it's clouds. So now I have three shapes, one, two, three. So I don't want to move like each of these shapes by themselves. So I'm going to use shift. I'm going to type that out for you, the shift key to select multiple. What I mean by that is I'm going to click on one, just regular click. And now I'm holding shift to click on the other ones. And I'm going to go to arrange group. Now I can move them all together and I can also change their color all together. So to color match, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. And again, I'm using my arrow keys to move. That way they're only moving left or right and not up and down. And I'm gonna head over to custom color so I can do my best to get this kind of like darker blue gray color. How does that, ooh, miss our gang, good job. I'm pretty good at color matching, but say that wasn't perfect. And I was like, oh, it should be like a little bit more gray and lighter Then just keep editing that color. Alrighty. And now I can just uh, move them out just a little bit. Now I can move that shape over. Boop, boop, boop. And uh, that, that looks like decent. Yeah, look at that. That's, I mean, that looks like a very basic sky. Now, um, if, if I was the artist and, and I was continuing to work on this for, you know, the next 45 minutes, I would like absolutely keep adding cloud shapes. Um, and I think I will add just a couple more sh cloud shapes just for the purposes of demo so you can see it again. But all the steps are just repeating at this point, using my polyline tool to trace clouds, focusing on going around the clouds versus right on the line because who will ever know? And if I start to, like, if I have trouble with doing one giant shape, then I'm doing it in small shapes. Getting rid of my border color by going to the little pencil and setting it to transparent. I'm gonna go with like a white gray. I don't know, that's not the right color. But I'm still, I'm doing these kind of like lighter cloud shapes right now. So if I'm doing it in multiple pieces, I want to remember to overlap. I hope you can't hear my alarm going off. It's like so loud for me. <laughs> All right, the overlapping those shapes. Okay, because I don't want like weird lines in between them. I'm just kind of like guesstimating where these like lighter cloud pieces are. And again, I want you to remember it's clouds. If it's not perfect, no one will know. <laughs> Let me grab like a couple. There's like some lovely light areas through here. Like, yes, it makes sense to start with clouds because um, clouds are in the background, but it's also nice to start with clouds because they're very forgiving. So again, I created this in multiple pieces. So I'm gonna hold shift to select those pieces. Now, some people prefer to leave the borderline on there until they're ready to select it. And that can be helpful just to tell where all those shapes are. So I can also wait to get rid of the border. So I've, I've clicked on one, I'm holding shift to select those. And now I can set my 
pencil or my border color to transparent. Um, I like this kind of gray color. I just feel like it's too bright. So I'm gonna go to custom. And instead of trying to like match up the exact color, I'm just setting the transparency to 50%. And I, I will make a decision here. So by making it transparent, it does mean that you'll like see the lines more. Sometimes it doesn't matter that much. Sometimes you just won't really notice it in the scheme of things. So using my arrow keys to move it over. I think I also forgot to group this. So arrange, group, yep. So let's take a look at it. Uh, you know what, like when I'm looking at this, I'm not a fan of these like lines right here where it overlaps. So I am gonna go back to this color and I'm gonna go to, actually, how's that color? No, that one's transparent. I'm gonna just continue playing around with these colors until I find the one I like. Let's see, how does that gray look? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I, I really wanna go with like a slight blue tinge to it. So let's go to the blue, do the gray, but just slightly blue tinge. I'm happier with that. Um, and like I said, at this point, I've demonstrated how to do the clouds three times. Um, I, I, there's definitely more work to be done on this, but I don't wanna make you watch me work on this for 40 minutes. I did wanna show you another example where I've played with the clouds. Um, if you do uh, decide to do like large shapes, you have the option of doing a gradient instead of solid colors. Gradients only work if you actually make one big cloud shape versus uh, multiple pieces. Um, and then I know it's going to look weird after just one day. Um, like for example, like I didn't even like where the pyramids are, it's like a random space and that's okay uh, because next week when we do that middle ground, it will make a lot more sense. So this is the exact same sky, which looks super weird right now. And there it is after the next step. And you can see that it, it still totally looks correct. All right, so just to recap, in terms of your grade today, let me annotate this. What is due today? Um, solid color background. Can't spell today. Solid color background, that's the blue here. And then cloud shapes. All the cloud shapes. Which is our background. Alrighty, that is part one of our landscape project. I will stop sharing my screen. And thank you for coming to art class.